so what? Friends. As you go through your teenage years, you'll change. Your friends will also change. You are all developing and exploring your own individual personalities. So don't be surprised if you can't be as close to certain friends as you used to be. It's all part of finding out who you connect with at a certain time while going through certain experiences. You and your close friends may drift apart while you explore new stuff and may get close again later on. Accept it, it's a normal process. Because these friendships come and go, there can be a lot of gossiping, bitching and backstabbing. There can be jealousy and possessiveness about who is whose best friend and what secrets you share with some people and not others. There are those you're close to no matter what's going on and those who are just friends because you happen to be in the same situation. Once you leave that situation, you may find that you don't have a lot else in common. When any group of people get together, certain dynamics can happen. One person may dominate the group. It may be because they're the most intelligent, sensible, strongest, loudest, or the most selfish. Other people in the group may also take on certain roles as well. You can get the one who's the joker, the one who's crazy and daring, the one who's practical, and the one who's sensitive and acts as a conscience for the group. There's also the one who may get elected as the dustbin. They get laughed at, picked on, bullied and blamed for stuff. The reason this happens is that people and groups don't like to admit faults, so they project this stuff onto a scapegoat. The dustbin member may do this either because they're the strongest, the weakest, or that's the only way they can be part of the group. But this role doesn't do their self-esteem much good. All of these roles may change according to the situation the group are in. Also, people in groups often split into subgroups and squabble and bitch about each other. The best thing to do is to follow your own wants, needs and conscience and not get caught up in this political stuff. Never do anything that you don't want to just because the group wants to. Being a follower has its upside. You don't have to make the decisions and the consequences and responsibility for what happens can seem less as it's shared. But it's not a good way to mature. At some point you'll have to make decisions and take personal responsibility for your actions and life. Friendships are really important. A friend is someone who is there for you. They're someone who can help you learn and cope with life. As you become less dependent on your family, your friendships play a bigger part in your life. They offer a new security and a place to share your experiences. Problems. Competition. People are competitive and this will happen in friendships as well. You can be envious and jealous of your friend or it can be the other way around. Competing with your friend is a good way to learn about life. You get to push yourself harder and so do they. But if jealousy is becoming a problem then you need to talk to each other about it. Be honest about how you feel. If your friends don't get on. It's up to you who you have as your friends. If they don't get on with each other then that's their issue not yours. You'll probably get a lot of pressure to take sides but try not to. If your friends are having a row it's best not to get involved. You could try to play the peacemaker between them but be warned you may end up with falling out with one or both of them when it was not your argument in the first place. Don't worry about it too much. Let them sort it out. In a couple of days or a week the drama will pass and things will carry on as normal. Gossip. Although it can be fun, it's best not to get involved with gossip. If people tell you stuff, then just keep it to yourself. She did, she did. What a cow. Remember that if people betray others' trust by gossiping about them, then they'll probably do the same to you. Why wouldn't they? You already know that they're bad at keeping secrets. Typical. Yeah, well, what reversal? People tend to think that girls and women gossip more than boys and men. Actually, they gossip the same amount. If one of you is dating, if you or your mate start seeing someone, then you or they can feel blanked. If you're with someone, then don't abandon your friend just because you're all loved up at the moment. If it goes bad, you'll need them. If it's the other way around, try to understand that your friend is lovey-dippy at the moment, but don't put up with being messed around. For instance, if they blow you out suddenly because their partner wants to see them. Your friendship is very likely to last a lot longer than any dating relationships either of you has. Arguments. This can be very upsetting because you're close. As you know each other well, you can say stuff that you know will hurt. Even though you may feel that you really hate them, it's likely that you're feeling so strongly because you love them. Appreciate that they'll be angry and hurt also. Communication is important, but it might be an idea to let a bit of time pass for things to calm down. Girl-boy friendships. A lot of girls say that they like to have boys as friends because they're more upfront. If a boy doesn't like you, then they'll tell you. Boys tend to be more protective as well. Boys say that they like the fact that their girlfriends are more open emotionally. They don't act all tough like boys do. 
All of this works well if there's no romance or sex pressure, but it might happen that one of you wants to make it more. This is understandable. You're both open with each other and it's an emotionally close relationship, but it can be agony for the one who wants to take it further. See chapter on To Be More Than Friends. This podcast is one of the 187 subjects covered in So What? Teen Survival, an ebook downloadable from Amazon.